Hey man, what is going on? So I am building some new LEDs. The ones I'm building that you're watching is gonna be for somebody else, but I'm going to upgrade my flower room from like the panel style to the bar strip style. Uh, I'm going from LM561Cs to LM301Bs. And let me just tell you exactly what we're working with. So just by looking at it, you can see that I'm using the extruded aluminum. This is the 15 series from keynuts.com and they are really reasonably priced. It's heavy duty aluminum, so it's secure. It'll be an easy way to mount all the lights and make sure that everything's balanced well. And then I'm securing the LED bars to the actual extruded aluminum using these T brackets. And then I am putting M6 screws in and then sliding the bars onto that and then screwing down the nuts on the back. And the way I'm securing those brackets to the extruded aluminum will be T-slot nuts. And essentially a bolt will go through those. I can screw it down and then it'll be able to move freely on the bar to allow me to do any distance. So say you don't have plants at the end, you can kind of scrunch them together for more penetration or you could spread them out further for a better coverage. Next up is figuring out how I want to run the power. So I got these terminal blocks off Amazon. They're pretty cheap. They come in a bunch of different sizes depending on your scale of bars and how much you need to wire. And it allows me to do an easy connection from everything into one little area instead of hopping around the outside with wires. I thought it might be better. It's just something I was working on. I will talk about a lot of the problems I had with this. And as I've built multiple of them now, I've come to the conclusion that other versions are better. But what I did with this one is I used nuts and washers to slide it into the T-slot. I got it into the center and then I screwed it down and tightened it so that it was nice and secure. And because I am mounting the drivers to the bar themselves, because this is an onboard driver system, this gives me one central location that all of the power will be running through. So it'll give me an area to work with so that I don't have wires going everywhere. And if you haven't picked up so far, this is a spine style build where it's a single bar running down the center and holding everything out, similar to the old Fluence or Think Rose or any of those ones where one spine goes down and then all of the bars come off as opposed do like end caps where it builds a giant square. I will say in my later builds, a giant square is the better choice than a spine build. Having two separate locations to support is better than one. So let's take a look at the drivers we're using. We're using the Meanwell HLG 150H48As. I don't want a dimmer on them. I want them just to run at max capacity the entire time. If the person that I'm sending these to wants to dim them down, he has the option of doing so just by screw driving it in. And as these drivers come factory set at the 3.2 amps, so each one of these drivers is running two bars at 1.6 milliamps, which is what the bars are rated for. But the bar's max amperage is rated at 1650. I wish it was rated for 1750 because that would give us so many more driver options. So each bar is 48 volts times 1.6 equals 76.8 watts per bar times 12 is 921.6 watts overall the entire canopy. And that's almost a thousand watts over your entire tray. I mean, that's not bad for an LED light build. So I guess the next question would be is why am I running two drivers per fixture when I only have four bars? Why don't I just up the size of the driver and run one? The reason is because the XPEs and the TERP bars, so the XPEs are your far red and deep red and your TERP bars are your blues and UVs. They're different color temperatures. They can't run on parallel together for whatever reason. They can run in series, but if I went with a series that would allow me to do a four bar series, the driver would be overrated, which means I'd be just wasting money on extra power that I wasn't getting out into my LEDs. This was the most efficient and best priced while still getting every oomph of amperage and power out of the drivers. It just seems clunkier, but overall this was the best choice to go with. It took me a lot of deliberation to figure that out. Yeah, it, this is all the other choices were about 100 to 150 watts lower than this option. Now, I at the time was not looking at the I Meanwell XPE drivers because they had come out with new ones that were in um, constant currents. Those are way less expensive, still IP rated, and they are so much cheaper. So on one of my next builds, that's the drivers I went with and they actually are doing a kick-ass job. So yeah, there's more than one way to skin a cat. You know, you have different Meanwell drivers you could have gone with. You could have gone with the uh, Invitronics. There's a bunch of other driver options out there that have just as good capabilities. But the problem really comes down to is figuring out what your requirements are, what you want your max to be, and then you ability to dim them down. So my usual coverage is 50 watts per square foot. So for example, if you're in a four by four, that's 16 square feet. 
feet times 50 is 800. So the max you want to be able to do in there is 800 watts. However, depending on your air conditioning and all the other stuff, time of the year, uh, time of the grow cycle, you probably don't want to be pumping 800 watts through, but you want to make sure that your lights can get up to 800 watts. That's what your max is going to be set at. So you want to build a light that's going to be able to hit that. So the guy I'm building this for just wanted the most amount of power for the best price. This entire thing cost him $1,200, I think, has the ability to be modular and move around depending on where he's putting plants. I'm not sure if it's a four by to three by six, but that's a huge distinction because that's 24 square feet versus 32 square feet or times 50 watts per square foot. That's 1600 watts versus 1200 watts per grow area. So that's kind of a big distinction. But even so, no matter what its size is, if it's a three by six or a four by eight, the 920 is under the 50 watts per square foot. But that's kind of the best I could do with the budget I was given. He wanted to spend like about a thousand dollars. And I think he spent around 1100 to pay me to build these. So not super crazy on price for 960. It's a little bit less than a dollar per watt. I also happen to do a really good price on builds because I happen to have a hookup on LEDs right now. There's a gentleman in San Diego who I met on offer up buying hydroponic stuff from him. Turns out we were both LED junkies. And a few months later, he started a company called Linear Pro. And you'll be seeing those LED strips here in a minute. But essentially because I'm picking them up in person and not paying shipping because I'm paying cash so I could save a little bit because it's going directly to him. I'm saving about $10 a bar and I'm buying 22 bars at a time. So that saves me enough to then go and spend that extra savings onto the drivers or onto the extrude aluminum and that kind of stuff to make the build quality a little bit better. So because of that, I am making a more reasonably priced per watt bar than available. Or if you felt like taking the time, you can go on alibaba.com, talk to your distributor in China, pick them up from China directly or a knockoff company and get them shipped over. You can complain all you want that the Chinese quality isn't as good as American quality, but all the diodes, PCBs, and aluminum all come from there anyways. So what's the difference between having them assemble it for you or doing it over here in the United States and calling it better when it's literally the same parts and pieces? Now, there are exceptions to the rule with that, but for the most part, most of the stuff comes from China anyways. So let's take a look at the LEDs in question. These are from Linear Pro. These are their XPE bars. So right off the bat, one of the things you'll notice is the fact that they come already established on heat sinks. I really like that. I like the fact that I don't have to go and find another place to give me heat sinks. I also like the fact that the heat sinks are angled. So you have reflectors and they have the T-slot in the back. The T-slot fits a number eight screw or an M4 nut. So either way you want to do that. So one of the things that I really like about this bar is the fact that it's a three foot bar. It's 35 and a half inches, which would fit a three by six, which would be a three by three tent, which fit a two by three tent. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I like the size of this in a second, but let's talk about some more specs on the light itself. The bar itself is 150 LM301B Samsung diode spread between two rows. So it's a little bit wider of a spread coverage instead of the one row. And then it's got five color temperatures. You see on the bottom is the turp bar and the top is the XPE for the reds and the far reds on top and the UVs and the blues in the bottom. So the XPE bars have the 660 and 730 for the Emerson effect and the turp bars have a 405 and 385, I believe, for a little bit extra trike production. I like the fact that the diodes are split between two rows instead of one row for a little bit more coverage as opposed to penetration. But because I do a lot of scrog work, I look for an even blanket of photons across the canopy because I want um, all of my top nugs to be kind of equal. And then after about eight inches, I don't mind it like dwindling down because it's really all about that top canopy for me personally. But if you turn these up as bright as that I'm doing, that penetration will definitely be there. But for me, I'm going to dim them down so it's an even blanket of photons. And within the first five inches, I'm getting that 1200, 1100 micromoles. That's really what I'm looking for. So the reason the guy even started this company, this linear pro company was because we were both trying to get the PLC strips, but they continuously sold out and couldn't keep on stock. So we both were getting frustrated. So he decided to make a company and just buy his own and like sell the lights for everybody. And that's kind of where this whole thing started. But he decided instead of going with the two foot lengths or the 22 inch ones, he decided to go with the three foot lengths. I personally like the three foot lengths better. I think they fit more options. And all you really need to do on these to fit a four by four tray comfortably is put an end cap perpendicular to the rest of the bars. And then boom, you have a light that'll do a four by four tray. 
but for the 3x6, 3x3, and 3x2, this thing will fit perfect. It'll even do like clones on a clone rack phenomenally well. So although this is a really shitty par meter and I can't afford an Apogee, those numbers aren't really that bad. That's an 18 inch ruler with about six inches taken up. So about 12 inches to the actual meter in the center. And those numbers aren't really that bad. So I'm just letting you know that there's another company out there with another tool available to you to use. Maybe you wanna redo your lighting. Maybe you wanna add side lighting. I'm just bringing you a new product that you may not have known of and showing it to you and letting you decide if it's something that might fit your space better. And it works well for me, so why would I not share? Now, with all that being said, this is the end of the video. I am gonna replace mine, but this will be the only build video I put up. All of the items will be linked in the description. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. But until next time, guys, grow it funky and keep it fresh.